Matthew 25, reading from verse 14. Matthew 25, reading from verse 14. Let's stand for the reading of the word. For the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of heaven, is like a man traveling to a far country who called his servants and delivered goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, and to another uh, two, and to another one to each according to his own ability and immediately he went on his journey in other words he went away right then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents and likewise he who had received two gained two more also but the one who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his lord's money after a long time the lord of those servants came back and settled accounts with them so he he who had who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying lord you have delivered to me five talents look i have gained five more talents besides them his lord said to him well done good and faithful servant you were faithful over the few i will make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of your lord he also who had received two talents came and said lord you've delivered to me two talents look i have gained two more talents beside them his lord said to him well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a few things i will make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of your lord then he who had received one, the, one, uh, the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. I was af- and I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look! There you have what is yours, not multiplied as you gave me. But his Lord answered and said, you, you wicked, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and my, at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him. Give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given. And he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant. Somebody say unprofitable. So cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There will be weeping. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Father, thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Speak to us. Amen. We may be seated. Um, you can sit here. 
the, the, the scripture that we have read is, is the story or the parable that Jesus Christ tells. But Jesus wants us to understand how does the kingdom of heaven operate. Are you getting me? How does the kingdom of heaven operate? He is telling us that God wants us to be profitable. God wants us to be useful. God wants us to be diligent. God wants us to be of value. This is what the this is the message that Jesus is trying to to give to his disciples or to people around him at that time. The, this is about the kingdom of God. He's likening the kingdom of God. Uh, a man had servants and he gave them talents, then he left and he was absent. Then came after a long time, came back to them to settle accounts with them. Now, he settled accounts with them because they were gifted or they were given talents. So he comes and he's expecting them to have multiplied what he gave them. Are you hearing me? So in the kingdom, profitability is the main thing. God does not like unreliable people unusable people or selfish people like the person who had one but she became it became selfish about it did not multiply it selfishness does not multiply but selfishness will Hoard. You understand hoarding? Yeah, it, it will not multiply. So, then the master was very angry and said, take this guy. Take him away from my eyes. Put him into the darkness. Put him into the place where there's whipping and gnashing of teeth. One of the things we learn here is that when you are not profitable you will be put sometimes into unnecessary pain. There are many believers who are experiencing problems they should have not experienced had they decided to be profitable in the house of God. So if you are not profitable in the house of God, then Satan will hand you over things that will occupy you and stress you. Are you hearing me? Huh? Why you look sad? There are people who are crying, who are stressed, who are frustrated, who are complaining, but the things they are dealing with would not have come to them had they decided to be profitable. There is certain protection that God does to believers who are profitable. Then there are certain consequences and problems that will visit people who are not profitable or who are not useful. I'm not saying that if you are profitable, you are not going to be tested, you are not going to be tried, you are not going to have problems, but I assure you that you will always conquer. But this guy, as the master said, he must be put into that place. There's no victory in that place. There's no victory in that place. There's no, he, he cannot triumph in that place. It's just a place of uh, 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 the rotating or the settling, uh, what, 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 uh, endless frustration that he is going to experience. And it's not profitable to him. It's not helping him. Are you hearing this now? But if you are sir, profitable, you'll experience problems, but problems will make you. They will not destroy you. 
problems will 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 will, will you know will, will will make you stronger will give you wisdom will you know your your life will change your perspective will change you will have certain growth in your life in other words if you are profitable even when you pay, you face pain pain carries a purpose but if you are put into the place of darkness there's no there, there is no there is no there, there is no purpose, but there's, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you are being wasted. You know, I don't want to meet troubles in life that are wasting me. I want to meet troubles in life that are exercising my faith, that makes me to gain more muscle, more wisdom in life. I, 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 don't, I, I don't claim that I will not have trouble. I will have trouble. But, but the Bible says trouble does not last always. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a trouble that does not last because it comes for a certain purpose into your life. You struggle for that life. Your marriage struggle for a season. Your, 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 your health struggle for a season. Or your job trouble for a season. But that season will pass because there is a purpose attached to what you are struggling with. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Yeah, we're, I'm trying to tell you, we are not struggling the same way. No, we are not struggling the same way. We are not, we are not being tested the same way. Some other people are destroyed, but we are being tested. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that thing is not going to kill you. That problem is not going to kill you. That frustration is not going to kill you. You're not going to lose your mind. No, you're not. You're not. Because you are profitable, you're not going to lose your mind. In other words, the Bible says that all works together for the good, for them that love God and who are the called according to his purpose. All works together. All. It means the positive and the negative, the painful and the nice thing the nasty things everything mixed together God is a master he knows how to put together pain and put together things in order to create something good out of it so you are not in the darkness if you are in darkness you are just punished by life but if you are in trouble, you are trained by God. You get it? So now, the master does this. Now, what I like is this. He gives them according to their abilities. According to their abilities. He gives them according to what they can bear. We are not blessed the same. We don't have the same capacity. God, it does not matter where you start. But what matters is that you are going up. What matters is that the one that had two talents will have four. The one that has five will have ten. In other words, if the one that has one has had even a chance to overtake others, but because he looked down on what has been given to him. The worst thing you can do in the house of God is to look down on the things that God has given to you. Look down on the skills. Look down on the talents. Look down on the abilities that God has given you that you should have given into the house of God no matter how small it is. Are you hearing this now? I mean, I mean, a simple thing is a smile. You've got a good, a good smile? Please, smile to everybody. Make everybody comfortable. Are you hearing that? Yeah. You know, you know a smile can bring a person back to church? Huh? You just go to a person and smile. <laughs> you know. The, the great thing is this. The Bible tells us God gave them according to their abilities. But remember, all these abilities have potential to grow. So in other words, the one that has one can end up having 10, can end up having 20 because the master says, you handle it well, I'll shift you to another level. You have been faithful over the few, I'm going to give more to you. You're going to rule. I want you to understand this. They multiplied what they were given. But the master is giving them rulership. 
its levels. So they are, they are, they are, they, are they, they come to the point where they master. They master the level. They master the promotion. They master where they are. God wants you to master. If you are at work, master where you are. If you are promoted, master that department. Because with mastering comes more promotion. Touch and heaven, say master. You have to master, we have to rule. You have to master, we have to rule. Wherever you are, make sure that you invest yourself. Make sure that you invest yourself in knowledge. You invest yourself in skill. You invest yourself in interpersonal inter skills, whatever that may be. Invest yourself. When you do that, then it's mastery. And when there's mastery, it attracts promotion. Are you hearing me? So, <laughs> do you know that when you master your, your skills, you master your knowledge, then you master your personality. Yeah, you know, you know they're gifted, they're gifted people. Like, like the one gifted with one talent, but like Lex interpersonal skills that one is not a people's person he's gifted but it's not people's person because to multiply we have to trade with people people carry your promotion when you develop yourself in connecting with people at work you may set yourself up for promotion. Because bosses promote people that they are comfortable with. Now, the great thing is this. Both the one that multiplied and made 10, multiplied and made 10, and the one that multiplied 2 and made 4, they are receiving the same words, exactly the same words. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. You have been faithful over what? Now I'll make you in charge over many. The one that made 4, receives the same words as the one that made 10. So God calls, the master calls 10 little. And he also calls 4 little. But the one that has 4 may think that the one who has 10 has more than him. But the master sees everything little. People, will, people can get jealous when God blesses you with something that he calls little. Just because one has four, then you have ten. Then he thinks that you are there. But the master sees little. I'm not sure if you get me. Are you hearing me? Yeah, it's true. That Mercedes is little. That big house is little. That promotion is little. Because when the master is blessing you, he is not looking at what he gives you. He is looking at, at where he takes from. He's got plenty. And what he gives you is always lesser than where he's taking from. I'm not sure if you understand what I'm trying to say to you. You see, you say I'm a millionaire, the Lord sees little. You are a billionaire, the God says little. You say I'm a billionaire, as long as you are not a trillionaire yet, God still says it's little. He does not look at things like we do. Sometimes we get jealous of people because we think they have plenty. But we really don't know that God has not even started with those people. If you are faithful over little, 
I mean, if you are faithful of a little, little 10 million, little 20 million, little 100 million, as long as you have it, you must know that it's little. So now, I'm going with this mindset that God is blessing me with little things that are big to me. You don't get, are you getting me? Yes. That, that, that salary increment is little. But it's bigger where you are. The way he says little because it's challenging your capacity. Because it's easy to be big headed. And then think that you have arrived. It's easy when you have 500,000 in the bank. It's easy to think that you have arrived. But the master says you have little. So you don't control your possessions, your blessings, just by your idea. But listen to the words of the master that what he has given you is still little even when people think it's big. So next time when you're blessed with a big car and everything, blessed with a big house, blessed with money, when they appreciate you, say thank you so much. The Lord has blessed me with a little. And I'm grateful. And it's so little because there's so much need in the world. It's so little because you can't educate every child that is not educated at school you can't you can do a little but 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 you can you can't feed the whole world no matter how rich you are it comes to be little are you hearing me but here is my message here's my message the master expected the, the Bible says he called his servants. So they were already his servants. And they were already working. And he knows that they are working. They are working in his presence. So he knows they are working. So he knows their abilities. That's why he gave them because he knows them. But now the test is that they should be faithful in his absence. Oh, it's easy when the master is there. You run with a tray, everything, master, master, everything. You clean the house, you do everything. But what if he's not there? Will you still do the same? Will you still be active the same? Will you still keep to your chores the same? Will you still carry your responsibilities in his absence? Here, the biggest test here was not the multiplication of talents, but was faithfulness in the absence of the master. I'll give you some few scriptures. I'll give you some few scriptures. Philippians 2, chapter 12. Philippians 2, chapter 12. This is the problem of churches. I'm trying to talk about today. The problem of churches is that we have people who have conditional faithfulness. And Paul, when he was speaking to the church that he loves, his favorite church in Philippi, Philippian church, this is what he said. He says, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, in other words, obeyed, you do things accordingly, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. I know when I'm around, guys, you do well. I know when I'm around, you give. I know when I'm around, you tithe. 
I, I, I know, I know. And, 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 and it is not that I don't appreciate that. I appreciate it. But it's not enough. Then it says, but much more in my absence. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Are you hearing that? He says, in my absence. It's good and easy for you guys to behave well when I'm around. But he says, my heart, I want to hear that you are doing even more well in my absence. So he says that what will bring joy to me is for you, is for me to hear that even when I'm not around, things are going well. Even when I'm not around, you attend services. Even when I'm not around, you're still tithing. Even when I'm not around, you still do your pledges. Even when I'm, on, uh, I'm not around, you still go to prayer. I just want, if I'm not around. He said, that this is, the, listen, can I tell you? This is the true maturity of believers. Who don't do things for face. Who don't do things just because the leader is there. But they understand they are not connected just to the physical person. But they are connected to the heart of the person. Because they know even when he's absent but his heart is still with them. Can you serve a heart of a leader even when he's not there? So Paul here is leaving them with his heart. But his body is absent. His body is somewhere else. He then now trusts them with his heart. That guys, when I come back, it will be joy to me if I found you at a progressed stage than the one I left you. In other words, you are not wheelbarrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to push the wheelbarrow. It will, the wheelbarrow performs as long as you are there. It's very, you know, wheelbarrow, I'm telling you. Yeah, you'll be happy and say, it's good. Stop. It stops with you. Are you getting me? So, he says, don't be wheelbarrows. Be the kind of machine where I press the button and go, but you're still in my absence. So are you hearing me? Yeah. Now here's the, 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 the I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying to tell you something. Now in churches we have this problem that as pastors we have a duty to be there all the time. Sometimes even when we are not supposed to be. Because if we don't, you don't. For me to know that I have a church that knows my heart. How do you know as a teacher that your students will make you proud? It's during exam. You get out of the class. Nobody writes the exam with his teacher. How many of you wrote exams with your teacher around? The teacher gets out of the class. You get an invigilator. Sometimes you don't even know where they come from. You don't even know them. But they are there to challenge and to provoke from you what your teacher has labored and deposited in you. So the time of exam is the time of the teacher being absent. But what you do during exam is either brings honor or disgrace to your teacher. So, it's like growing a child. 
Do you know the more your child grows, the more they detach from you? When they grow, the sign of growth is detachment. Oh, I wish I could talk to you. Did you hear what I said to you? The sign of growth is what? Yes. Yeah. Just imagine you have a 12-year-old. Mommy, something wrong there, right? Right? So the more the child grows, the more they detach. I don't say emotionally. I mean physically, the more. Uh, 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 you, know, you know, small kids, when they play, small kids, when they're still young, they play with their friends, play with their friends, and then they come to the house, and they say, Mommy, Mommy, they're just, because they can't detach from the mother. They play, but they come, and they, they, just, they just want to see that you are there. Mommy, uh, uh, then go to play, and then come to Mommy, go to play. But when they are teenagers, sometimes you need to ask them, where are you? Does it make sense to you? You have to ask them, where are you? Sometimes when they grow, you have to check them in their room if they are still there. But when they are young, they are so attached to your skirts like all the time. Mommy, 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 my everything. So the church that performs bad when the pastor is not there. It's a, it's a childish church. It's full of babies. Big babies. Yes. If I'm not around, I ask about the attendance. If the attendance is not well, then I know that my work has been put into the dustbin. My labor, my preaching, my sweating. But if I hear that everything goes well, and people have even upped, uh, they've upped their standard and they are serving and their things like that, then to me it brings joy. If there's a time you need to be faithful, it's when I'm not around. Yeah. Which means I don't need to be there for things to run, for things to go well, for things to function. I don't need to be there. If I need to be there, then, oh, go, go, to, go to Numbers chapter, chapter 11. Start from, start from verse 14. I think 14. Start from verse 14. I want to show something before I close. I want to show something. So the test of these servants is the absence of their master. The other one fails to function. Because they're all servants. Do you think that guy... It was his first time to be given responsibility. No, it was not. He, they, they were all servants. Right? It means they were all working. But the challenge of the guy is that he needs the master to be there in order for him to be effective in his job. Why will the Bible call him his servant if he does nothing? Look at this. Moses had a problem. You're going to see the problem, Moses. I'm not able to bear all these people. This is Moses. He's complaining to God. I'm not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. Can you see? This is a pastor now. He's complaining to God. He said, it's too much. I can't even take holiday. Hey, did you get on track to say to you? I can't even take holiday. When I take holiday, when I, came, when I come to the church, I'll, I'll have to start it afresh because when I go, people go. <laughs> Are you getting this? So he says the burden is too much, too heavy for, for, for me, right? Continue. 
If you treat me like this, now, Moses is not fighting people, he's fighting God. Some of you don't know that as pastors, sometimes we fight God because it's him who called us. <laughs> we did not know you guys. Uh, in fact, we have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> if it were not for God, you wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be here myself. <laughs> it's God who has put us together, right? Now, look at this. He says, if you treat me like this, please kill me. In other words, the heaviness of ministry and people is pushing Moses to depression. If a person has suicidal thoughts or killing kind of like thoughts, that's depression. He says, kill me. You know, and he's not saying tomorrow. He says, kill me where? Here and now. Some of you have never seen this kind of prayer. Kill me here and now. If I found favor in your sight, do not let me see my wretchedness. Don't let, do not let me see my failure. Are you hearing me? Now look at what God said. God said, then the Lord, so the Lord said to Moses, gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel whom you know to be the leaders of the people, officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of the meeting that they may stand there with you. Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take off the spirit that is upon you and will put the same, the same spirit upon them. They shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone. Do you see what God is saying? God says, uh, elect some people. Get some leadership. But this leadership must have your spirit. I will take the spirit that is upon you and put it on them. Because they should not work without having your spirit. God did not say the Holy Spirit from heaven. He says the spirit of Moses. So, these people when they operate, they have to operate in your spirit they have to carry the burden with you but having your spirit your anointing that it says that will bear the burden with you because if you don't have a spirit of a leader you don't bear burden you become a burden So Moses is complaining because the, the, the ministry uh, 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 is heavy upon him. He can't even breathe. He even wants to die. Now, let me ask you the question. Do you have the spirit of this ministry do you have the spirit of CKLI or you are just coming to church do you have the spirit because if you have the spirit you will not become a burden we will not be asking about your tithing will not be questioning your giving oh the bishop is not around the offering has gone down um, um, are you hearing me the bishop is not around the offering has what gone down it goes down because you don't have a spirit even Jesus before they served him he breathed to his disciples and said receive the spirit they had to receive his spirit in order to be able to serve him, in order to be able to work with him, in order to be able to be a blessing to him. Are you hearing me? So I ask your neighbor, do you have the spirit of the house? Yeah, we have the spirit of the house. 
the spirit of the house will cause us to work together the spirit of the house will cause us to hold hands together the spirit of the house will cause us to achieve things together the spirit of the house will cause us to are you gonna it will cause us to work hand in hand do things together and achieve things together preach like this I teach like this I have a calling of nations in my life are you here I'm trying to say to you and when nations are calling should I stay here because when I go when I come things will not be okay I'm, I'm just asking are you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you getting me are you getting me so these months I will be traveling a lot I've got invitations from different nations so I will be traveling can you assure me that when I come back You'll still be here. Can you assure me that you will maintain your responsibilities and even excel more in my absence? Should I be preaching in nations and grieved and worry about you at the same time? I'm asking you. Touch and say, neighbor, and say, get the spirit. Yeah, get the spirit, get the spirit. Get, 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 get the spirit, get the spirit. Get the spirit. In each and every church, there is a spirit that operates people's hearts that gives people passion to serve the Lord with gladness tenacity and diligence that spirit delivers you from being a church goer you know a church goer you just go to church that's all I will take the spirit that is upon you and put it on them. Allow God today to anoint you. Allow God to anoint you today. Allow God to give you the spirit. Allow God to anoint you. And God says that after they're anointed, he says, they will bear the burden with you. They will not be a burden to you. They will help you carry the load. Can I count on you when I'm not around? Will you be able to engage the voice of Satan? Because he will speak. Oh no, don't go to church today. No one, no one's gonna see you. In fact, no, no, they will not even know that you are not there. Hey, you know Satan can make you invisible. But they don't, they, 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 no, 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 they know. They, they, they will not even notice. Uh, you are not that important. But, 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 but I told you last week that your presence, your presence in the house of God matters. I told you that. But Satan was saying, no. Hey. Yeah. You know, you know, in the church, we can all be absent. Satan telling us that it's, it's you alone who's absent. 
and he's telling the other one as well. And all of a sudden, nobody comes to church because everybody thinks that uh, it, it, it's just me. It's just me who's not around. Others are going to church. So God says, I will put the same spirit, same, put the same upon them. Put the same. This will make you to be the same, to act the same, to work the same, to be committed the same. That spirit of God will cause us to be family. You are part of family here. Huh? We have not just come to church. And we are not an ordinary church. I'm telling you. The reason why I'm preaching like this is because God is getting ready to multiply us. God is getting ready to fill this house with souls and with people. And every time when you see God challenging you, you need to know it's time to grow. It's time to move to another level. It's time to mature. Let me tell you something. If God allows the church to be small, it's because he's trusting those people. They are the foundation of the hundreds of people that will come. You are the one that will determine the growth of this church. Not the people who are coming. So God needs to deposit things in you that will cause other people when they come to connect and stay because you are mature. In fact, God is trusting you guys to take care of the people that will come, that God will draw. Because Jesus says, if I'm lifted up, I shall draw men to me. So he's going to begin to draw people. But when they come, they should not come to, to babies. <laughs> oh, shame unto you. When you are so in trouble, a person who came yesterday is now canceling you. But you have been here. You have been here for a long time. <laughs> A person came yesterday saying, my brother is going to be okay. No, don't worry, it's going to be. A person came yesterday. A person has two weeks at church. You have years at church. And he's the one now canceling you. How does that sound? Huh? <laughs> it's a vice versa situation. Guys, Please, carry this thing with me. God is not only trusting me, he's trusting us. Be a son and the daughter in this house. God said this, the, the reason I love Moses, he says he is highly committed to all things in my house. That's what God said about Moses. Let your commitment be not shaken. Have stability. I heard the prayer was good. You guys, you came, right? Yeah? It, was it good? Wow, clap hands for yourselves. You know, it's good. Yeah, clap hands for yourselves. Because was I there? I was not there, right? I was not there, right? But still, you did good, right? My heart was there. My heart was there. And did not come deliberately. I was, it's not because I was too occupied and what I came to the airport, I was in, in Durban, but I could come from airport and come here. But I chose not to. Just give you guys privacy. <laughs> I thought you needed a little bit of privacy, you see. You did good. Continue to do that. 
it's wonderful. God likes it. It excites God to see you being committed in his house. Your presence matters. Whether it's prayer, whether it's service. Your presence matters. Don't look down on your availability. We need it. And God needs it. Because if you don't come, then I'll be preaching to empty chairs. Huh? If you don't come, it matters that you come. And when you come, God changes even the message. Do you know the message is only tailor-made? Do you know I preach the same message sometimes to different people? It comes out the same uh, differently because it's different people. Because God begins to tailor make that message to meet the specifications of the personalities that attend in the service. Preach the same message I preach in Nigeria because I'm preaching to Nigerians. It just changed. Yeah, it changes. Message changes according to the needs of the people who are present. I was preaching at Bishop McGargle's church. I was preaching about faith. You know, I was preaching about faith. But I spoke faith. It came out different. Because of the people that were there. Is it clear to you? Now, this thing is going up. Oh, what happens? They're coming to my mouth. I don't know what's, what's happening. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, be faithful. Just be faithful. The greatest thing God can give me is to give me faithful members who are not only faithful when I'm there, but who are faithful, even more faithful in my absence. When you do that, you'll do me proud, you'll do Jesus proud, you'll do God the Father proud, or the Holy Spirit proud. You do that. We need your presence, your availability. You have to know this. If you are not at church, it has to be a reasonable reason. You understand reasonable reason? It has to be a reasonable reason. It does not have to be I'm tired. Oh, I don't feel like. It's kids who take decisions based on feelings. Sometimes I try to speak with Tana and we argue. And I see I'm, I'm not winning because I bring reasons. He's, she's bringing feelings. Feelings, 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 feelings. Kids can eat poison as long as it feels nice. If it tastes nice, kids can eat it. But if you've grown up, you understand this is poison. Kids cannot differentiate between ratex and sweets. Do you know that? Your child cannot differentiate that? Ratex or sweet? It's the same thing to them. And if ratex is nice, your child will have more and more and more. Because kids go by feeling. Why? Because their minds have not developed, fully developed yet. Have a fully developed mind. Like the Bible says, let this mind that was in Christ be also in you. In the church, we have to develop a certain mindset. When people visit our church, they must see a certain mindset. Commitment, love, dedication, pure heart in serving God. 
If we can have that, ah, oh, then I'm, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Then there's nothing to worry about. So, are you getting me? So, yeah. Amen. I'm done. I don't know what else to say now. I'm done. Clap hands for Jesus.